when we when I go through these season previews and I, I talk to people and ask them about who they feel like is going to take the biggest leap, you, you hear Grimes. You know, Grimes is my candidate. Some people say quick. But Brunson is not the name that that I've heard. And, and on your recent podcast on, on the Athletic NBA show, you said it could be the floor general that could take another step. And I'm wondering, what does that look like? You expound on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so there I, I've written this too. Like there there are important people with the Knicks who are just flat out insistent that Jalen Brunson is not at his peak. Wow. That he is going to be better. To be clear, I haven't seen what's going on behind the scenes, you know? I d I don't know. But there are important people with the Knicks who are just like dead set, like, no, you don't get it. Wow. This is who Jalen Brunson is. And the points that have been made to me and their valid points are, you know, after January 4th, he averaged 28 a game on 52% shooting from the field and 45% shooting from three. Mm. That's three months. That's not a little hot streak in January. Yeah. That's, that's half the season that he did that. And then he goes into the Miami series, the, into the playoffs, and he's really good at the start of the playoffs. And by the end of the Miami series, the dude is just impossible to stop, right? Like he is 32 in game four of the Miami game of the Miami series, 38 in game five, and he plays all 48 minutes, and then 41 in that closeout game. And obviously they end up losing that series and they lose two out of three of those games. Mm -hmm. But everyone who watched those games knows that like Brunson was the one who made sure that it was actually competitive those whole ways through that whole way through. Uh, and there are people with the Knicks who are just insistent that like, you know, last year Brunson was a little short of being an all-star, fell short of being all NBA. And then you get to the end of that Miami series and Eric Spolstra is saying stuff like how literally on yeah. the record in a press conference, like how, what was the quote? How is this dude not all yeah, NBA? No, yeah, is yeah. That, yep. Yep. I think that was the exact the, quote. Was how exact is this quote. dude not all NBA? I mean, Eric Spolstra doesn't just say stuff, just say it. Uh, and I think the answer of how is this dude not all NBA is because Jalen Brunson actually had a good amount of improvement during the season last year. Like a lot of the time, the guy who gets MIP is someone like Larry Markinen. Yeah. Who, by yeah. the way, I didn't have a vote. I would have voted for him. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. He was, he was great last year, and he was the most improved because he was way worse than Jalen Brunson two years ago. Mm -hmm. But Markinen showed up, and from day one, we're like, oh wow, this guy got way better over the summer. When Brunson he showed up on day one, we were like, wow, this guy got way better over the summer. But then if you look at him in May and you compare that to November, you're like, wow, this guy got yeah. way better over the season, yeah. too. Yeah. So I think there are people who expect like that 28 point scoring on 50, 40, 80 shooting, the stuff that he was doing to the heat at the end of the Miami series when he's not just putting up those numbers. Like, obviously, those are good point totals and the assist totals were around eight, nine, ten in those games. And 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 the efficiency was was quite good. And obviously, those are good. But it's like. He's not just doing those numbers. He's putting them up against Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Eric Spolstra, like the best there is yeah. at each of those positions, right? And and he's doing it while the entire defense is just locked in on him every single possession mm -hmm. because they're horrified of him. And he's still putting up those kinds of numbers on that kind of efficiency. And I think there are people who think like, that wasn't a Jalen Brunson hot streak. Like that, mm. that, that is now who Jalen Brunson is. So, I mean, there are people with the Knicks who are like 27, 28 a game on super efficient shooting is better passing, better chemistry with his teammates is totally within, within the cards for him. Uh, and then you look at it and you're like, he's 27. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there are guys who make another leap from 26 to 27. Sure. So, I'm not ruling it out. I mean, these are these are smart people who see what's going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes. I, I'm I'm not ruling it out. And there is a trend where Brunson has gotten legitimately better every single yeah. year of his career. It's not just that he got better last year. He he has gotten better every single year of his career. And 
So maybe maybe it continues. Trends tend to be trends for a reason. Yeah, that that is true, man. You, you just can't count them out. And uh, another leap for Jalen Brunson in this town is going to go insane. And as you mentioned, he seemed to have gotten better from the second part, from the beginning of this calendar year, the second half of the season on through. And he did that through a myriad of injuries, right? He had the mysterious foot injury. He had the hand injury. He comes back. He, he puts up 40-plus on the Cavs. Then he goes into the playoffs. And, and with the Cavs and the Heat, two of the top two defenses in the East, um, had no problem. You know, outside of Jokic and Murray, was the only one to really solve that Heat defense. But as we saw in that playoff matchup against the Heat, as they started to key in on him and completely disregarding the Knicks shooters, that's where things kind of got a little bit dicey. <laughs> 